Hey, this is Joe from The Recording Revolution. Today we're going to talk about home studio setups. I'll give you a quick tour of my setup, and then we'll talk about a couple of things to consider with your space to make sure you're getting the most out of your home studio. If you want to know my gear recommendations, especially if you're just starting out, uh, check out my free gear guide. You can get that for free at recordingrevolution.com slash gear. Now brace yourself for some high quality content. I whipped out my iPhone 12 mini to record this quick studio tour. Sometimes people go way too in depth on their studio tour. So this will be super quick and to the point. So this is the command center, right? This is the cockpit where everything takes place. Uh, this desk was custom made by a company called Sound Construction here in Nashville. The Studio Live, this is the original Series 3 from Personas. That is my hub. Everything goes through this before it ever goes in there or gets recorded on camera and things like that. Real quick look at the rack. These are some older ADL preamps from Personas. This is a patch bay I'll talk about in a second. Uh, old Eureka. I'm using the Persona Scepter monitors. I've got this big ultra wide curvy LG monitor because my main computer is this M1 MacBook Pro currently. Um, I do a lot of my scripting and stuff on paper. I've got this old motif as my keyboard controller, but I've also got it plugged into a set of monitors so I can just play when I want to, and it sounds amazing. And then really, so the rest of the room, <laughs> I share with my kids, video games for the boy, dollhouse for the girls. Um, and then back here, this is what you see a lot in the videos couple of amps, a couple of guitars, they're not all out, and then a lot of my mics and cables and such all live in here, in addition to other toys and such. As far as acoustic treatment, this room is like an A-frame room over my garage, so the main treatment pieces are these two gobos, they're about three feet wide, seven feet tall, I keep one there, and I keep one there. That back corner, you can't quite see it, but I've got some bass traps that just line that far corner. And then a few other pieces of treatment, one there, some over there that I'm gonna hang on the ceiling above the mix position at some point, and that's it. Add in a carpet floor, and you got the makings of a good sounding studio. My first piece of advice when setting up your home studio, it might be a little controversial, is to make this position that I'm in right now, this mix position, make it ideal for recording as well as mixing. For me, that means making sure I've got carpet or a rug on the floor and then some big panels to the left and right of my mix position. This creates a little bit of a quiet space where the majority of what the microphone picks up is my voice or my instrument. Right, My voice comes out and it gets absorbed in all these different places so that mostly the microphone is picking up my voice. Uh, this, much to my, I'm sorry, Mr. Smith, my college vocal professor, much to his chagrin, I do a lot of my vocal recording right here seated in this chair. I've got this nifty little arm for my vocal mic. I can change the mic if I want. And then I've got access to all of the buttons and the keyboard and the mouse and everything to control the software while I'm recording. It's ideal because now I can just stay right here and get everything I need to get done without having to get up. Which leads me to my next point, which is ditch the middleman. Uh, quick story. So I do a print newsletter every month for my gold members. And for the first several months, I would type it up in one piece of software and then put it together and kind of format it in another. And I always found that I had to rewrite things over here to make it fit like I wanted it to fit on the page. And finally, this past month, instead of writing over here and then transferring over here, here, instead of having that friction, I just wrote it over here in the final software that was going to do the formatting. And it turns out it was a way easier process to get everything written and in the right numbers of words that needed to be there to fill up the different pages. And I realized I was making it more difficult on myself. A lot of people do that in the home studio. They think, okay, I see people standing far away from their computers when they record their vocals. I've got to do that too. Problem with that is a couple of fold, couple of things, couple of fold. The problem with that is twofold. One, you've got to make sure 
you have a way to get like the headphones over there. So you'll need headphone extension cables or a headphone amp. You'll need a way to set up your microphones over there. And then you've got to have a way to control the software, right? Either you have another laptop that you're using to control it or you're running back and forth. All that is friction. Our time is valuable. And for most folks in a home studio environment, we're doing this in our spare time. So it makes sense to do things as efficiently as possible so you can make the most music with the limited amount of time that you have. One way to do that is to make your mix position kind of the command center, the cockpit for everything that goes on in the project. I swear, if I have any more gnats flying around me, I'm going to scream. Um, so now I can sit here. I can have a guitar on a stand there. I can have everything else I need within arm's reach, and I can do all kinds of production things without ever having to leave this position. I just have to roll back a little bit, do something, then I can roll back in, make some changes in the software, spin around, and record some more. Fun tip, too, if you're a guitar player, make sure your chair has armrests that lift up so you can play without the guitar bumping the armrest, and then when you're done, then you can sit back and let your arms rest on your arm rests. And another thing, don't forget about vibe. How the studio looks and feels matters, both for you and for anyone who comes in to record. I don't technically need this studio desk, right? It is is not doing anything that I couldn't do by just stacking all this equipment on a ping pong table, right? But it has a vibe. It works well, it's functional, but it also looks good and kind of gives off this appearance of every time I walk into this room, I see this desk and I think, this is a recording studio. Does that mean you need one to make music? No, of course not. Um, but it's a part of the vibe process for me. Having the desk in this position versus under that window, which probably makes more sense from an acoustic standpoint, is because I think this looks better. Uh, the camera sees all this stuff over here versus seeing like a doorway and a stairwell uh, and a bunch of kids' toys and their mess over there. To be completely honest, it's usually atrocious over there. This works better and creates a vibe that works well for my videos and for making music. So while, yes, you want to do all the technical things and acoustic treatment and all that, you also want to create a vibe. You want it to feel like a good place where you want to sit down, spend some time, and be creative. If I could give you one takeaway from this video, it would be set up your space so that you can create as quickly as possible. That's why I have this little patch bay over here. It's just plugged into the back of my mixer so I can plug a mic in here and I know it's plugged into the back of the mixer without having to crawl around the back and fumble through cords. It's all ready to go so that I can be recording. If I walk up here, I can be recording in as quickly as 60 seconds if I have to. And that removes a whole lot of barriers that would otherwise prevent me from maybe even coming to the studio on a Saturday afternoon, for example, because I know I've got it set up in such a way that I can get rolling really quickly, which makes me a lot more likely to get in here and make some music. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hope it was fun for you. If you need some advice on specific pieces of equipment to buy, especially if you're starting out, once again, I've got a free gear guide. You can get that at recordingrevolution.com slash gear. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.